Okay, so today I'm going to talk about mental testing in the U.S. Army. So the start of mental testing, as you just learned, um, was psychophysical measurements, wealth, family dynamics, and then the Binet Simon test in France. In 1908, Henry Goddard brought this testing to the United States. And then um, in World War I, which was from 1914 to 1918, there was an, a high demand for soldiers. However, about 83 of these soldiers had been rejected previously. So the U.S. Army needed a test to place these soldiers and to flux out any uh, mental defects that they might have. So they hired Robert Yerkes, I think that's how you say it, um, what, who was the APA president at the time. So Yerkes slightly changed the Binet uh, Simon. He administer, administered the test to about 2 million recruits. Um, and the first tests were personal data sheets, which was a personality test. And then they also had the alpha and beta tests. So um, these, you can see the top one is the alpha test and the bottom one is the beta test. And the alpha tests were administered to literate English um, speakers who were kind of considered um, who would be smarter. And then the beta tests were administered to minority or illiterate recruits or non-English speakers. And so that's why they had like the, in the alpha test they had more words and everything. And in the beta test they had a lot more pictures. And these were done in a big room with, and there was a lot of recruits in the same room, and the um, administrator would stand in the front of the room and give the same um, questions to everybody, and they would answer. So the goal of this was to screen recruits and flush out any mental defects. However, this was also used to place recruits in jobs that they would succeed in with maximum benefits so the Army could get the most out of these recruits. Um, there were a lot of criticisms with this. So one of the uh, criticisms is that Robert Yerkes had a lot of wrong predictions and inconclusive results. So um, he thought that the people who were lower class and were taking the beta test would not function well in higher positions in the army. However, it was later um, found that this would have been wrong. They actually would have been fine in you know like medium position jobs and everything. And a lot of um, people were actually uh, not, they were rejected from the army because of this. Um, and then they, a lot of people said that the techniques were bad. So having one person stand and give the test to everybody was a really bad way of testing. And they should have done it a lot differently. Um, however, there were a lot of contributions from this. Um, one of them was that after the end of World War I, the army wanted to expand the role of psychology in the army. So they recognized that there were near, neuropsychiatric casualty as a result of war, which led to more screenings before somebody could actually enter the army. In World War II, they required psychiatric evaluation to determine high psychiatric disabilities, so meaning that if somebody had previous mental health issues, that this was screened. In the Korean War, there was an expansion of mental testing, mental health testing, testing of leadership qualities, leadership qualities and adjustment qualities. And then today we have intelligence capacity, which is used to place a recruit most likely to succeed. So this is still what they were doing before, but they've expanded it, so it's a lot better than it used to be. Um, also, they base on education. So um, most of the time you need a high school education to join the Army or in a GED, which is equivalent. And <clears throat> now there are, is a review of general psychiatric evaluations and physical and medical screening. So along with... Um, uh, previous mental health issues, they also have medical screenings and they have a lot more uh, intelligence testing to see where somebody will fit in the army. So some conclusions are there's more, re more resources for people, so the general entrance screenings are more helpful. Um, also they receive help, they uh, realize that they have rec problems in the past and they're trying to solve those problems. So they know that because of war, there's a lot of mental uh, 
issues that go into that. So they're trying to actively um, combat that and have more uh, help for people. And they have mental intelligence tests, which ha which resulted in mental health tests that have capabilities. So, are there any questions? Yes. The first slide you mentioned wealth was that a part of testing before that, and that wasn't part of the army test at all. No, that was um, the beginning of mental testing, even before the uh, second test. Do you have any other information about that? Um, no, it's just like it was a like a really long time ago before the um, that was the first kind of mental how they thought mental um, intelligence worked. So if you had like higher status, you had a higher intelligence. Um, so you were talking about once they had leadership and adjustment qualities. What's an adjustment quality? Like how well they would be um, able to adjust in a position or in the um, army. 